I'm here with Dr. Tani Hederley, who is a consultant paediatric neurologist, and I'm going to ask her some questions that have been put to us by um, Tourette's patients in the UK. Hi, Tani. Um, we often get asked by um, parents and young people um, what the projected timeline for Tourette's uh, will be like. What can we expect um, at uh, what age? Can you speak a little bit about that for us? Yes, I mean, I can talk to the children and young people about the research, but I always emphasise that everybody's individual. And we know what the research says, for example, about populations, but we don't know necessarily that that's going to be true for every individual child or young person and family. But we do have some guidelines and in my clinical experience, I think it's what we also see clinically, that children tend to start with ticks young, somewhere usually between four, five, or sometimes six, and then they do follow the wax and wane course that we all know about, and the children know about, and experience. But what tends to happen is they become usually more obvious around the age of between 10 and 12. And we don't know, know the reasons for that. There's lots of research questions around, is it hormonal? Is it just a period of stress because of the transition to secondary school? Although that's the time when often people are stressed, but they are pleasantly surprised about the transition. But we do warn people to expect an exacerbate, exacerbation around that age. And then, in about three quarters of children, after puberty and maybe 12, 13, you start to see the lessening in the course of the number of attacks, the number of exacerbations, I don't like the word attack really, but uh, the exacerbations of ticks. And towards adulthood then, we have this peak, 10 to 12, and then we see this kind of settling down. and. The figures suggest somewhere between 10 to 25 percent of young people will go on to have significant ticks for themselves into adulthood. But in the majority of children, they report that they've either learned techniques to control the ticks and not let them bother them quite so much, or they experience a natural submission around that age and that's what the research shows but of course we've also met young people who've gone on to have persistent ticks and that would be the group that we offer techniques and advice and therapies if they wish to have so you know and I also talk to young people about not necessarily expecting the worst but also remembering a lot of people live adult life with ticks and Tourette's and live a very normal life and I try to say to people it shouldn't stop you doing what you want to do uh, for a career I get asked that a lot people with 13 40 say what, well, what can I what career choice and I say choose what you want to do and then we'll work towards you know, trying to support that because I don't a lot of people have false misconceptions that they won't be able to do certain things um, and that's how I usually answer the question. That's great, Alan. Yeah.